Good morning. Thanks for joining us at 7 o'clock. I'm Tracy McCain. And I'm Caitlin Francis. You're watching Eyewitness News here on The Wax. We've got a lot to talk about, obviously, but first we're going to say good morning to meteorologist Jill Gillardi, who is in this week for a vacationing. Scott Haney and Jill, we've got a first alert yep. here today. We've got a first alert later this week. Kids are heading back to school. Yes, not yeah. not good timing. It's still summer weather, so yep. we still have to be mindful of these storms. Yeah. But yeah, this afternoon and then again Wednesday afternoon could be problematic for some. There is that risk for severe weather, slightly greater risk, a higher coverage where you see the yellow. So that's a level two out of five risk issued by the Storm Prediction Center. Where are those storms right now? Well, they're starting to form across the central portions of northern New England, Vermont into New Hampshire. But as we get the heating of the day and uh, this cold pool aloft and this system pushing southward, it's going to cause the thunderstorms to erupt later on today. Downpours, which could lead to localized flooding, certainly uh, limiting, uh, you know, your travel abilities to, you know, abilities to see is what I'm trying to say uh, with the heavy rainfall. Strong wind gusts could get up in that 40 to 60 mile per hour range. So the patio umbrella needs to be closed just different things you think of that could blow around if it got really windy. Large hail is even a possibility. So quarter size or slightly larger, that's going to cause dents in cars. Uh, you know, it can cause all kinds of different kinds of damage if you get under one of those uh, large hail producers. And of course, there's a dangerous cloud to ground lightning. But right now we're starting off with some areas of wavering visibility due to fog. Eventually today we will see, of course, the fog burning off. You can see it right now happening in Torrington. We have very few of us left in the 50s. It's in the 60s for the most part. Winds are light from the north. So the storm's coming in later on this afternoon, north to south with highs in the 80s. We'll be timing that out for you. Also talking about our secondary first alert for Wednesday coming up in about 10, 15 minutes from now. Caitlin. All right, thanks, Jill. Let's get you a check on those roads. Heading out the door, heading to work, getting the kids ready to go to go back to school this morning. Um, your drive times and speeds are actually looking pretty typical. We've got uh, heavier than average traffic volume, 95 southbound. You can see the New Haven to the George Washington Bridge. The Parkway is also more substantially backing up, but we're not dealing with any crashes. We do, however, have those road closures still in effect here in the southwestern portion of the state. That full list is uh, basically the same from last week, according to DOT, and that's still posted up on the WFSB app. A little bit of reduced visibility that Jill has been mentioning, so weather and traffic here together. I'm just going to reiterate that, but you can see we do have some sun shining that could cause a little bit of sun glare on that morning commute. Live look in Hartford, Waterbury, Middletown, and Meriden. Let's quick check at your Connecticut Chevy first alert traffic report, driven by your Connecticut Chevy dealers. Well, it's 7.03 here on your Monday. It's been a week since historic flooding has devastated western Connecticut. So today, Governor Ned Lamont is expected to announce a plan to help those small business owners try to get back on track. Yeah, very important here. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Marcy Jones has the latest on that announcement. That's right. Good morning. Well, we know that plenty of people are in need of assistance. However, this plan is strategically involving state funding as well as locally owned small businesses to help them get back on their feet. Now, this would be completely separate and aside from any potential federal funding that businesses could be eligible to receive if the state is awarded a major disaster declaration from FEMA. Currently, the state and impacted municipalities are working with FEMA to determine if they qualify for FEMA assistance. Governor Ned Lamont will be joined by representatives from the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development and other state and local officials. In the meantime, the work continues. Neighbors helping neighbors pick up the pieces and get back to normal. I think people have done really well communicating between the communities of who needs help and how do we get to them. I hope more people who are looking for help continue to get it and find it. This event will take place later this afternoon at 3 here at 67 Family Diner in this shopping plaza. Make sure you stay with us on air, online, and on our WFSB app for the absolute latest. In Seymour, Marcy Jones, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right, Marcy. 
Well, this afternoon, Senator Richard Blumenthal will visit Southbury to meet with businesses and homeowners who were impacted by last week's flooding as well. Yeah, he plans to discuss federal support after President Biden's disaster emergency declaration. Blumenthal's visit will start this afternoon at 1.30 at Town Hall. And there are ways that you can help those people rebuild their lives after the historic flooding. Channel 3, The Wax, and 991 PLR have teamed up to help the flood victims. You can donate to the Community Rising Flood Relief Fund by visiting teaminc.org. Just click donate. All of the money goes directly to the victims. And if you need help after the flood, send us an email about your situation and make sure you include your address and phone number uh, to the email address that you see on your screen. You can also call the number that's listed there uh, for help. Well, we have a major update about a disturbing story we first told you about back in May. A babysitter in Clinton is expected in court today after being accused of running over a young child in her care. State police say the two-year-old boy was standing in the back seat of Maria Santiago's car when he opened the door and then fell out. Santiago then ran him over. That's according to police. Now, witnesses say the tire was still on the boy's legs when they came to help. Santiago turned herself into police. She's facing multiple charges, including risk of injury to a minor. Well, right now, one person is recovering in the hospital with serious injuries after a crash in Manchester. Police say the crash happened near Buckland Hills Drive. Only one person was injured. We'll, of course, update you as soon as we learn more information. Police in Waterbury are continuing to investigate a shooting this morning. Officers rushed to the crime scene. That's on Bunker Hills Avenue. That happened just after 6 o'clock last night. That's where they found a man who had been shot. They say he is just expected to be just fine, and police are asking anyone with any information to contact them. Well, Bristol police looking for a missing teenager this morning can use your help. Darren Brown is six foot two inches tall. He was last seen wearing a gray Nike sweatshirt and white Puma sneakers. If you've seen Darren or know where he might be headed, contact police as soon as possible. This morning, a group of teachers protesting in Bridgeport because of what they describe as massive problems inside local schools, including air conditioning issues, rodents and general poor working conditions. The silent protest will take place during the superintendent's speech at today's convocation. That's at nine o'clock. Participating teachers will be wearing all black. Well, it is a big day at UConn Stores campus. It's the first day of classes there. This year, the university is welcoming 6,500 first-year students. This is the largest freshman class in history. UConn will have almost 25,000 students across all of the regional campuses this semester. Speaking of back to school, Channel 3 is your back to school authority. And this morning, those alarm clocks waking up Waterbury Public School students yeah. bright and early. Yep, Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Olivia Schuler has the update from Waterbury. There is no more hitting snooze. Students have to come back to the classroom today here in Waterbury. A lot of excitement between both students and teachers. And as you mentioned, there's a lot of new changes, procedures and policies that are being implemented starting today. And one of those involves one of these. Waterbury Public Schools is introducing yonder pouches in grades 6 through 12. Personal technology like AirPods, cell phones, Bluetooth devices, and smartwatches will not be accessible throughout the school day. Yonder pouches are a magnetic locking smartphone pouch. Students will enter a phone free area and will place their phone in a yonder case. Once inside, the case will lock, but you will hold on to your phone at all times. To use your phone, a student would step outside the phone free zone and tap it onto an unlocking base. Interim Superintendent Darren Schwartz says the yonder pouches are designed to allow students to focus throughout the day and stay safe. Uh, what we have found is that precursors to certain fights or certain developments in schools, it, it, it was happening on the phone. It was student to student, phone communication. And so uh, the pouches, we believe, will not only help students' uh, emotional health and psychological health, but also it will reduce the ability to be able to uh, to, to, to navigate those safety issues within the school. Students will still have access to their laptops throughout the day. That is where they do some of their coursework. The Connecticut Department of Education did put out some phone guidelines that they'd recommend. However, districts can choose how they would like to handle their phone policies district by district. In Waterbury, Olivia Schuler, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.
Good morning, everyone. It is 710, a, a lovely start right now in New London. Just a few clouds, uh, otherwise bright conditions, calm winds, and a temperature of 66 degrees. As we go back towards Middletown, you can see some of that low-lying fog. Otherwise, it is uh, mostly sunny to start this morning. And now fog is more of an issue across Litchfield County, where there's a special weather statement for the limited visibility until 9 o'clock, uh, kind of patchy everywhere else. So uh, other than that, uh, things are looking good to start off our day. Still feeling good out there. It's a little warmer in New Haven versus, say, Salisbury, about 10 degrees cooler there. Uh, feeling in the 80s this afternoon. Notice the icons changing 2 o'clock through 6 o'clock. A stormy weather impacting a part of the state. And we have issued a first alert for this afternoon into the evening hours because we're expecting uh, some strong thunderstorms to develop. It'll be quiet, though, tomorrow and warm. And then Wednesday, here we go again. Strong to severe storms, heavy rainfall, certainly have that first alert. So bigger impacts in the afternoon hours. I'll get into more of the timing and location of some of the worst weather coming up a little later in your first alert forecast. Caitlin. All right, thanks, Jill.